I'd like to call this meeting to order. Thank you for coming out. And a citizen asked me something uh, this morning, and I thought it was a good idea. So today is the anniversary of the tragedy of 9-11. And so I would like us to take a moment of silence and remembrance of what took place and all those victims that lost their lives. So I think we just take a moment of silence, please. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Um, we have uh, on our agenda a commission report from our local chamber of commerce, and we are going to invite Heidi McCutcheon to the podium, and she's going to present us with a quarter lodging tax report, I think. <laughs> we have a $50 fine. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I don't that. Well, we just made it. Coffee fund. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, in accordance with our agreement with City of Shelton to provide visitor information services, I'm happy to present this second quarter report on tourism and visitor information services. Um, as you know, we have three visitor information centers, one in Hoodsport, uh, one in the caboose, and then one within the Shelton um, Chamber office as well. Um, so just four areas um, to review. Our Facebook page has um, 2,000 fans now, um, which is a way that we get out a lot of information about events and happenings, um, what's going on in the community. Um, so here I've included the top three posts um, for second quarter of 2017. Um, so the, the most popular post was about the road to Olympic National Park staircase getting fixed. Um, that was followed by uh, business after hour photos that, that we did at our community credit union. And then our third most popular post um, was an announcement about Forest Festival. Um, so as you can see, um, those three posts alone hit about 10,000 impressions. It's been interesting. As time goes on, um, the next um, table there shows um, Shelton is where we have the most unique users, um, but that's followed by Olympia, Seattle, Union, Lacey, Belfair, and Allen in that order. So it's been interesting as, as um, we've utilized Facebook more to see Olympia and Seattle coming in second and third, whereas at one point in time it was Belfair and Union and, and some other of the um, smaller Mason County communities. So it's nice to see that, that growth um, there for, from our, our larger neighbors to the north. Um, visitor counts for second quarter is actually um, a somewhat interesting um, year as far as um, April, um, we saw a decline in users. Um, but if you look back to the weather patterns there, it was not a very nice month. Um, and then May and June, um, we increased um, 7 and 8% respectively. Um, phone calls for um, that, that we receive, you can see that those have um, declined. April declined drastically. Um, we, we believe that this is happening. We, we receive a lot more email requests. Um, so this report actually triggered us that we should probably be tracking all of the email um, responses that we get as well. Um, on the flip side there, um, you can see the Chamber website and calendar. Um, the, the website um, is, is about how it has been. Um, the, the most popular page is still the online event calendar, um, and that's followed by our employment page. Lastly, uh, we also design, well, um, designed, wrote, edited, and distributed another issue of the Byte magazine. And this is um, directly mailed to 18,000 people in, in Mason County. So that goes to everybody, every mailbox in um, Shelton, Hoodsport, Union, and Great Blue. Um, we don't use any LTAC funds for that, but um, this most recent issue, um, which hit mailboxes in June, we had four pages of events and happenings. Um, we spotlighted several city businesses. Um, had an article about the beautification program um, and um, yeah so we're gearing up for our next issue of that as well so 
concludes my my report. Do you have any questions? I have a question um, on the calendar mm -hmm. of events. Is that um, like community events as well as chamber events, or is that limited to chamber events? Um, we we highlight well. We don't, don't even, we have all of our chamber member events on there. Um, if it's something that for a visitor would be of interest, um, if it's um, like an open mic night or um, the canal cinemas, some of, some of these other things that perhaps they're not mm -hmm. necessarily a member, but it would be something that as a visitor one would be interested in, then, then we go ahead and, and put that on there as well. So okay. it's kind of a, a combination of the two. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, I noticed, you know, a couple of dips in the, the things and stuff. And right around April, I think we were all expecting the sun to come out, and it didn't. So I think it kind of slowed a lot of people up. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we always get these reports, and we always think that everything's going to keep doing this, like, forever, you know, and stuff. And so when there's little dips, trust me, the Chamber's doing a great job in the community. Okay. And we're not going to worry about that little bit. I do like the, the uh, kind of the layout. This is kind of new. I don't know from what we usually get. We usually get kind of block print stuff, you right. know. Did you change this? Whose idea was that? It, it, it was chamber staff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's beautiful. Thank um, you. Any other questions for Heidi? I enjoy the, the bite that comes out. Thank you. Very informative. Thank you. Does that conclude your report? Thank yes. you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks. Come back again. All right. Next is our weekly commission report. So, Commissioner Moore, did you have some... Uh, yes, I do. Tomorrow I have the Mason County Housing Coalition regular meeting as well as the executive meeting, which is separate. Um, on Wednesday I have a Homes First event, and um, on Wednesday there's an After Hours at Smoking Mo's. That's it. All right. Um, I have kind of a quiet week. I have a couple of meetings with some citizens this week, so I always enjoy doing that and listening to what they have to say about the city. Um, also, uh, after hours at Smoke and Mo's on Wednesday, and my briefing with Ryan on Thursday, and that's my week. All right, and uh, I will be tomorrow, Tuesday, attending my MACECOM board meeting. On Thursday, we will be having the Economic Development Council annual retreat. And that's like a five or six hour session, so we talk about a lot of things. And at this time, what I'd like to do is uh, make a request of staff. And so at this time, I would like to direct staff to look at our 2018 budget and give us, the commissioners, some options on how we might be able to lower our sewer rates. And so that's my request. Maybe uh, there's some ways we could do that. I do know it, it comes to me daily, if not weekly, or weekly, if not daily, uh, requesting the citizens about that rate. And so I think it'd be good to take a look at it and uh, see if staff can come up with some opinions, options on that. So that completes our weekly commission reports. <clears throat> and now is a public comment period. Does anybody from the public have something they'd like to talk about? Do we have anybody signed in at this time? We do not at this time. Oh, there's a gentleman right there. To state your name for the record, please. My name is Richard Wright, and this is my second time before the commission. Once was uh, on Cascade Avenue regarding uh, traffic flow in the morning for the people that are late getting their kids to school speeding. Today's comment deals with the same location but it has to do with cats. Really? As I understand it, there's a problem with cats, whether they be domestic or feral, in a large number of areas in Shelton. My next door neighbor has had and still continues to have I would say probably right now there's a minimum of five. It depends on how old the litters are. Behind my house on the alley, there is no one living in the home currently. There are folks in the neighborhood who put dishes out to feed the feral cats, the wild cats, the domestic cats. 
You can't hardly fence them out. I've put a cross piece of chicken wire on a six foot fence and I can't keep them out of my yard. I've got grandchildren who I've had in the home for two years. They're now finally out and will be back to visit. The feces is never ending. I can't keep up with it. I have rocks. I put down chicken mesh. I've asked the people who own the cats time and time and time again to do something about it. According to the local, I, I don't think it's code, I'm not sure, municipal edict, so to speak, there's nothing in there about cats. Cats carry rabies. Cats carry salmonella. Cats have all kinds of diseases in their fecal matter which currently is abundant at my house. And I have mentioned it to people within the city. Currently, I believe Edmonds has just included cats in their situation with their registration and licensing and metering of pets. I don't think there's, there is no word, not one word, in Shelton's bylaws that I've been able to find that says anything about cats. It does say that you can't knowingly trap something, a, a critter that belongs, that you would think might be a neighborhood pet. You can't restrain it. You can't keep it. Does a neighborhood cat have to have a collar to be a domestic cat? If it doesn't have a collar, does that mean it's a feral cat? If it's a feral cat, can I trap it and give it away to the people that uh, take cats? I'm way up to here with cats, and I finally have brought it to your attention. I anticipate that you realize it's a heartfelt request from me to be able to allow my grandchildren, who are two and a half, five and eight, to play in the yard without worrying about the fact that they're going to be carrying product around with them that could well make them ill. Appreciate your comments. And so he said. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there, well, we can't talk, but I'm hoping I hear from somebody. Thank you very much. Thank you. you I, I heard what you said, so. Um, all right, uh, next it looks like uh, if we are ready, we don't have a consent agenda today if I'm correct. Okay, so at this moment what we're gonna do is recess out of our regular meeting and we're gonna open up a public testimony regarding ordinance uh, on a vacation of a roadway. We'll turn the meeting over at this moment to our public works director, Craig Gregory. As we spoke uh, about three weeks ago and set the public hearing uh, we are looking to vacate uh, a roadway section that is unusable to the city of Shelton. It is the 4th Street right-of-way um, from Grant to Kenio Avenue. I th think we all talked about it and thought it was a good idea. So if anybody has changed their mind, this would be an opportunity to probably express that. I have a question. Can you tell me what the six, what goes into the six hundred dollar application for this is? What what constitutes the six hundred dollar application fee? It's the cost of doing business. Cost of doing business. It's so, posting the request uh, in three locations, and at the property staff work on this. Um, it is virtually capturing the cost of getting through one of these vacations for staff time. Okay. Is that and any legal. legal stuff that and goes legal. along? Okay. All right. Any more questions or comments for Craig? At this time, no. we. Did you have I, no. At this time, we open up the uh, discussion to anybody from the public that may have a question uh, or a comment to make about this vacation, this alley. And so, if there's anybody that has a specific desire to talk about that specific situation now would be the time and do we have anybody signed up we do not. okay so 
At this time, what I would like to do is um, close this public hearing and return to our regular scheduled meeting and ask for a first reading of ordinance number 1905-09-17. All right, ordinance number 1905-0917, an ordinance of the city of Shelton, Washington, vacating a roadway. Okay, and it appears that we concur to place this on the action agenda for October 2nd, 2017. We have no business agenda at today's meeting, but we have some administration reports, and that is kind of why we're all sitting up here other than just the kind of the three people and or four and or five. So um, I think first on this is our assistant uh, city manager, Vicki Look. Good afternoon, Mayor, Commissioners. A little bit about the update here is um, we've been processing uh, human resources, uh, job openings. We've had a couple recruitments for our police department and letters of uh, offers of employment have went out. So we're excited to, to get a couple new people on board down there. They'll be helping with the records clerk functions in the department. And um, I believe we have a job offer for our public works uh, admin assistant. And um, we continue to, to look at the other openings that we have and, and get those out for recruitment. One of the other things we wanted to talk about is um, the customer service desk upstairs is functioning pretty well now. Our, we have three ladies that sit up there and they're uh, cross-training so that they'll be able to uh, provide rack up support for each other and they receive utility payments. Uh, they take in permits and applications, schedule the Civic Center rental as well as parks and recreation activities. So very happy to get them all on board and people uh, members of the public and others, uh, the builders and things can come in and they just go upstairs and pretty much it's one stop and it's working really well. Jamie, our city clerk, is working with them and she supervises the department and it's, it's just going really well. Really happy with that. Uh, the other things that we've been doing is um, she's been doing a lot of public records disclosure lately, so kind of feet to the fire on that. Uh, doing a good job and trying to keep uh, everything going along as it should and doing the research for those things. Uh, the one thing I wanted to um, also remind everybody, and we have a flyer here, is that we do have um, a community uh, activity coming up. It's called Shelton Out Loud, and it's been going out um, in our media. Uh, our communications yeah. officer has been getting that out. so. Uh, just really encourage everybody to attend that, and um, we will all be there on the 27th at 6 p.m. here in the Civic Center, and hope to see a lot of the public come in and talk, and talk to us about questions, ask questions, have us talk and give presentations about the things that are going on and, and that sort of thing. So I encourage participation with that. And then I wanted to um, welcome our attorney, Kristen French, and she was going to give a bit of an update. <laughs> all right. Welcome. Well, thank you. And thank you to the commission for the opportunity. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they're speakers. I think this is just the recording. All right. Thing, so. For the opportunity uh, to serve here with the city. And I, I think most of you are familiar, but I just thought I'd recap real quickly. I'm happy to be back in my hometown of Shelton, and it's where I was born, raised, graduated. Um, I graduated from law school from the University of Washington in 2008. Good dog. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't really. I'm not an alumni. I just. I found that when anybody mentions things like that, you're supposed to yell "Go dog." So just I just protocol. thought I'd. Well, I appreciate. Do the, I appreciate the Shelton that. thing there. Yes, and so um, I came back uh, right after graduating and worked here locally um, in private practice for about seven years and had a lot of experience, both municipal and private. Um, and then two years, for the past two years, I've been down in the Portland, Vancouver area in a large private law firm, and it's been a great experience with both the public and private sectors. So I'm, I'm excited to bring all that perspective here to help do good work here with the city. And so I've been here about a month. I started August 14th, and in that time frame, I've been working really closely with both the managers to come up to speed. 
Um, I've been named as the alternate delegate for the WCIA role, and so there's a lot for me to learn on that front. Um, we've been working diligently to come up with a real streamlined process where department heads can route their legal requests seamlessly through the management and so that everybody's really well informed, knows what I'm doing, authorizes my work, and that I can turn things around quickly for staff. I think that's going to be very important. Um, on, on another front, um, I think it's great to be in-house because I've gotten to really see the issues kind of up front and, and timely, and I'm there to respond, and I think in a more kind of a proactive manner rather than a reactive, and I'm excited to work um, with all the departments to build a really f good foundation. So we're not responding to problems a after the fact, but we're kind of creating a good foundation. So I I'm happy to be here. I won't obviously get into details about things, you know, of you know, attorney-client nature, but I can say I went down the checklist and have worked um, with every single department already out the gate in the first month. So, yeah, we're excited. You're so private, I don't even know where your office is. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, is, it, is that what it is? We did? Yeah. I don't have an office? Uh-uh. No. <laughs> okay. Well, let's just move right along. <laughs> Welcome. I'm so happy to have you. Thank you here. very I'm, much. I'm, I'm yeah. happy to be here and always available. So we yeah. always like it when people come home yeah. too. Your dad yeah, was my it's, typing teacher. Thank wow. you. know, and I on that note, it was it was a great um, great moment when we realized in high school we complained how when will we ever use this typing skill that we're being <laughs> oh, taught? No. Now all I yeah. do is type. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 All right. Well. Thank Thank you very much. Thank you. That ends my report. All right. Next is, I don't see Nola here, but is the financial department update. Someone will give us that. Update. That'd be me. Oh, that'd be you? Yes. Oh, okay, Megan. So right now the auditor is here. She's conducting our 2015 audit. It's about 80% complete. She's conducting the single federal and regular financial audit. Um, auditors are starting to work on the city's accountability audit for 2015 and 2016. An accountability audit assesses how local governments manage, use, and safeguard public resources. The full financial audit for 2016 will be conducted in 2017, along with the 2017 annual financial audit next summer. Staff accomplishments. Elaine Merka has been actively involved in the Wellness Committee. And I believe on Friday we had a wellness screening, and it was a pretty good turnout. I want to say about 40 people participated, which is bigger than normal. She has also successfully reconciled all of the city of Shelton's bank accounts through June of 2017. This includes investments, which normally were not visible on financial records. We are down to just one group, the shop personnel, left to set up an ESS, Elonic Electronic Timesheet System, and it's been working well for all employee groups who are using it. Cheryl Betrozoff and John Sem have been collaborating on a project to clean up and consolidate our chart of accounts. This will eliminate redundant account codes, merge some account codes, and will simplify managing financial transactions and reading financial reports. Bobby Smith has continued working with Mason County Garbage to ensure a smooth and seamless transition for solid waste customers. Most recently, she has focused on facilitating resolution of unique situation with individual accounts and assisting the Mason County Garbage staff with final transition details. Uh, Kim Kilmer has been assisting the customer service staff across the hall with cross-training and backfill as needed in order to keep customer service running smoothly. She has also been working with the state archivist on some records projects. In our financial software, we have an option for output director. This is an efficiency tool within our financial software that allows us to email pay stubs, vouchers, and various financial reports directly to software users from within the software itself. We are working with our financial software vendor to get this tool launched. We anticipate having it fully functional by the end of October. It is budget season, and I have a copy of the budget calendars. I don't know if you guys have one already. T 
2017 budget amendments will be submitted to the Commission for approval in October. For 2018, our budget development plan. In mid-August, the commissioners and leadership team met for a budget retreat and we identified the top budgetary priorities. In mid-August to early September, department directors have been submitting their 2018 budget requests to NOLA. Right now, this week, NOLA is in Kennewick and she is working on building the budget. On September 18th, leadership team will begin its first review of the budget. September 26th, their second review. September 28th, the budget committee will have its first budget review. October 2nd, the full commission will have its first budget review. October 4th, leadership team will have its third review. October 19th, the budget committee will have its second review. October 23rd, full commission have its second review and first public budget hearing. October 31st, leadership team will have its fourth and most likely final review. November 6th, the full commission will have its third review and second public hearing, as well as the tax levy hearing. November 20th, full commission will have its third review and third and final public budget hearing and the first opportunity to adopt the budget. December 6th, the full commission second budget adoption opportunity and 18th, the final budget adoption opportunity. Did you say December 6th? Yes. Fourth. Yeah, it's on here, it's the fourth. Oh. Do you want us to change ours? Or? No, it should be the fourth if it's a Monday. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Preliminary mid-year finance reports are through June of 2017. With the gap to cash conversion complete and with all bank accounts reconciled in our financial software, from the beginning of 2016 through June 2017, we are able to produce draft treasurer reports for the entire year 2016 and through June of 2017. This is a high level summary report that reflects all funds, beginning fund balances, revenue expenditures and ending fund balance. The total dollars in all funds equals the total dollars in all bank and investment accounts. Please keep in mind this is a draft report and is subject to corrections and updates. We will be providing more detailed reports in the near future. So if you're looking at the treasurer's report, you'll see for 16, it's showing be beginning cash balance in each fund, revenues received, expenditures, and then the ending fund balance. So revenues minus expenditures equals ending cash balances. Keep in mind that before investments were not included in fund balances because they are invested and don't mature till a later date. So now you're seeing everything that we have. I like this. Mm -hmm. I looked at that today and I go, oh gosh, that is so clear. Yeah. Megan briefly discussed the work that Elaine has done the last couple of months, mm -hmm. but it, I would point out that there has been a ton of work that's gone into these two pages. You know, Elaine and Nola have been here almost every weekend the last couple of months trying to get this work done and the amount of information that we're going to be able to produce in the next month or so is going to dwarf any of the financial information the city was able to produce in the past. And it'll also be a lot more timely than it has ever been before. Yes. I have a question. Can you explain what the claims fund is? Claims fund is where payables, checks that we have written, that's where they go into and that's where they're cleared from. So any balances that may be there usually zero out within okay. the next month. All right. Any other questions? No, thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Next is you. No, it's Craig Gregory. That's nice. A report from our public works director, Craig Gregory. So just a few updates for you. Um, the Laurel Street storm extension it will be complete by the end of the week. This will complete a trunk line. The east side of Mountain View has never had a storm system so we had some in the past some pretty good flooding in the Laurel and High Street areas Sherwood Lane and Callanan um, and G Street and 
we now have a trunk line that extends from C Street all the way to K Street and actually has taken care of uh, some flooding issues that we also had uh, with the K Street project several years ago. They failed to install a couple of catch basins on the south side of K Street, which this picked up. So we have now got a trunk line that will provide uh, storm drainage for all of the east side of Mountain View. Awesome. Um, we will continue to put the laterals off of that trunk line, but it certainly gives us uh, a way to convey that water down uh, Olympic Highway North at this point. Citizens will be pleased with this. Yes, this has been a long time coming. We've been working on this for about seven or eight years now, so um, finally getting Great it job. completed uh, is a success for us. Uh, Olympic Highway South uh, storm improvements you will see in the next uh, either late this week or early next week. We have had a storm line that is up towards the log monument that crosses Olympic Highway South, which is a washed out uh, roadway. And we have a failing storm drain that goes under that roadway. So uh, engineering staff and also public work staff has come up with a plan to fix that, which will be much less costly than digging across a state highway. They're gonna go down the north side of Olympic Highway South and run it into the Mill Street uh, storm system. So you'll see them up there working uh, in that right away in the next week or so. Uh, should take about a week to finish that up uh, and take care of that issue that we've got up there now. Has there been associated um, erosion as a result of this storm, the problem with the storm line? There has. On okay. the north side of Olympic Highway South, uh, you've got some major erosion issues all the way from that roadway down to the railroad tracks at the bottom of the hill. Um, and it is some very steep terrain. Yeah. Uh, so the fix for that would have been probably in the million to million and a half range uh, to fix that pipe over the hill. Um, uh, In-house fix for public works is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of around 5,000. Oh my gosh, so, really? Yeah, That's fabulous. Very wow. good way to fix that. Great. Uh, financials are being sent out today to the FCS group. So, Mayor, your question uh, for staff was to, can we lower sewer rates? I think we will I, have- I asked to look for options, options. if that was possible. Mm -hmm. So, with those financials going off to the FCS group, we should have a little better idea of where we're actually at um, over the next three weeks to maybe a month uh, when they get back to us and, and let us know what we're actually looking at uh, for financials. So we are sending those off. NOLA's team uh, got those uh, finished up and out to us. So we're gonna get those emailed off uh, today uh, for them to take a look at. Great. So we should have a little better idea once they get back to us. Thank you very much. And last and final, the Sewer Basin 3 uh, plan review by city staff. Engineering is finally going to be complete uh, the end of this week and will be sent back to Parametrics who did the original design um, for, uh, finalize, for a finalized plan set from them. And we are planning uh, tentatively to get Basin 3 uh, out to bid December 1st. Great. Uh, so we're excited to see that uh, and hopefully the bid environment is friendly to us. Um, and we get that uh, done for as much as we've gotten grant money is what we're hoping for at this point. So Great. we'll see how that works out. Fantastic. And that concludes my report. Any questions, more questions for Craig Gregory? Thank you very much for that report. So this time we'll turn the meeting over to our city manager, Ryan Wheaton, and he has a few things to share with us. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. We have a few updates first. We have a very, well, in draft form, a, an update on our strategic plan work that we've been doing. So just to recap where we are, we started by doing interviews with you commissioners one-on-one -on -one to formulate some directions. From there, we have a 14-member group from staff members throughout the city who are working together. They have had, so far, two work sessions. And in between those work sessions, there's a subgroup of four people that have come together to refine some of the information. 
So below this you see draft mission and draft vision statements, and then values and a couple goals that are we're starting to work through right now. But we wanted to give these to you so that you can take a look at them and then provide us any feedback in the next couple weeks as we move forward for our third and likely final large group work session with those folks. I, um, I have a question sure. about that. Have we, uh, citizens are involved in this? Not in that group. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put together this draft information and put it out through our committees. Okay, it just, I do think it's important to hear the input from people who live here. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And this is also on the website. It's also on the table and available for anybody to take a look at. Great, thank you. Questions on that? You also have a copy of the final version of our Proposition 1 information. It's our responsibility anytime there is a vote that's put out to provide basic information. And we worked for the last few weeks in conjunction with our city attorney, Kathleen Haggard, to make sure that we had that information. So this is ready now. It was available, I think, Friday of last week, and then it will be out. Uh, we'll put a mailer out with the utility bill this month, and this provides the basic information that folks will need. Great. Any questions on that? I just had one question. Sure. Uh, uh, that in that I looked at it, and the um, I didn't notice any place. There's another form of government that the the, the government that we have here, and uh, and it wasn't mentioned in there. And that's probably because we're just going either from this one or that one. Correct. But there's a large number of cities that have another form, too. Correct. That wasn't mentioned, just did she, the lawyer wrote that? Then we worked together with her, but that form of government was not is not part of this discussion? Just because it's just the two. Because this one is the one on the ballot. The one on the ballot is mentioned here. Right. Okay. Well, it's just kind of information because reading that, it would, you would have an idea that there's only two forms of government in the state of Washington. So there are three that yeah. uh, were open, and when we initially discussed in this room, we provided information to commissioners and to the public about the different options, and all three were listed there. Okay. Well, so you asked for any comments, yeah. and that was just one that that one wasn't listed on there. So. Yeah. Any other questions? And the last piece of information, I was asked a couple weeks ago to put together salary information. So we were able to get information from Association of Washington Cities. And I think there are about a, a list of about 250 cities that they have tabs on. And we provided information both sorted by total annual salary. And then also at the end, we broke out the group that Shelton is part of on that list which is po population group of 7,500 to 14,999 and provided information and then also tried to answer the question that I was asked as to whether or not our budget would potentially fit seven people down the road. So that information is in there as well. All right. Is that all it? Thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much. Our next meeting will be on September 18th. At 6 p.m. in the evening, this meeting is adjourned.